Joining us now in Studio B is the voice of the Cougars. Perhaps he can shed some light on whether we call it a high seed or a low seed and how that all works. Great. High, seed. What, what high seed. High One's seed. One's a high and 16's a low. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we go. Numerically, yeah. no, but yeah. It's weird, right? Yeah. Good morning, guys. Good Hi. morning, hey. my friends. Yes. Big week for you. Tournament yeah. week as yes. you are calling BYU women's basketball against Auburn in Stanford, California. That 7-10 matchup on Saturday. Uh, what's your prep been like this week as you get ready for this first round game? It's been like any other kind of game prep. Just get into it. Drill it down. It's been fun. Show, show people your boards here. You got you got your boards. I got some people boards. haven't seen these. So yeah, you know. This is what you use to call the game. Our radio. Uh, we Because you're on the radio, will you describe this? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, these are what I call my spotting boards. And so one for each team. Uh, starters, backups, stats, names, numbers, all the good stuff we need to put together to have a good broadcast. Yeah, yeah. it's your prep uh, in on paper. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is which is awesome. Uh, and everyone has their own spotting board, which is kind of fun. Like My, their own style. Mine were their initially based off yours, yeah. which were based off Paul James. And then right? you've gone and you've modified, and we all I've do our totally own thing. totally changed it and just <laughs> ignored yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> this no, is the uh, second game you're going to call with uh, the fabulous Kristen Kozlowski. Yeah. Called the West Coast Conference Tournament Final. That went well. Yeah. Um, we're 1-0 oh together. Yeah, you are 1-0. So, yeah. Keep it going. Let's, let's keep that thing let's, going. Let's yeah. go ahead and keep it <laughs> rolling for sure. In your study, as you prepared for this game, how do you think BYU matches up with Auburn, who likes to play a matchup zone, and they are a high-pressure team? Yeah, it was really an interesting matchup because uh, if you look at the starting five composition, uh, both teams have a starting guard trio that averages double figures. Uh, both teams have a, a glue girl, if you will, at the four, uh, lower scoring but does everything. And then uh, both teams have a difference maker in the post. Now, Auburn's unique Thompson uh, is a double-double machine, whereas Sarah unique Hampson's... Thompson? Yeah, yeah her name That's... is very uh, original. That's what, uh, <laughs> so... Uh, and then, uh, of course, BYU Sarah Hampson is a shot blocking machine. So each has their own specialty in the post. So they look a lot in terms of composition from starting five. But then you look at stylistically, and yeah, uh, Auburn is all about press and crash. Press and crash. They're going to follow their, their misses, and they're going to press you every time they possibly can. They will press you off of makes. Uh, loose ball fouls, dead ball rebounds, free throw misses or makes. The only time they get back is on missed field goals. Every other time they will press you. 1-2-2, two, two, full court, uh, settle into a 2-3 or a 3-2. And that is how they win games is by making you chuck the ball around. It's an amazing thing. They have forced 20 or more turnovers in all but nine games this year. That's crazy. Here's a weird thing. So at the, at the, at the SEC tournament, uh, they forced Alabama into 26 turnovers and won. They forced... Texas A&M into 26 turnovers and lost. They lost on forcing 26 turnovers because they're not a great shooting team. They've been under uh, under 30 percent from the arc in their last four, under 40 percent from the field, and I think four of their last five. Not great shooters, but they compensate by following their misses and make you just chuck the ball around. And and the thing about them is you can beat the original wave of pressure. And they'll even turn you over in the, in, in the half court because you're still frazzled. You're still, your heart's still beating. You got past it. You're still making weird decisions. So, yeah. And, and so even when you get past it, it seems like teams still aren't quite right when they get into the half court. BYU just got to be right. Be composed. Be cool. I know that BYU feels they've got the guard line to handle this kind of game, but it's a, a really unique uh, contrast in styles. And the turnover number just kind of baffles me because they average 21 plus turnovers forced per game. A third of their offense, a full third of their offense in terms of scoring comes off of turnovers. And on the weekend, they scored 45% of their points off of turnovers. So if you can just be cool, just be cool. Just be cool. You'll be okay. You, you'll probably <laughs> win that game. Just chill, BYU, yeah, yeah. okay? Just chill. The Splash Sisters, yeah. uh, Paisley Johnson, Shaley Gonzalez, Brenna Chase. We'll talk to Brenna later coming up. They, they can change a the game. They combined for 64 points in the WCC title game. They can handle the ball. Sarah Hampson's in the middle. I think BYU is a tough matchup for a lot of teams in this tournament. And, and, and BYU's guard trio is a higher scoring group than Auburn's guard trio. And I think there's more potential for Cougars to go off like we saw Brenna go off maybe in Las Vegas. She, she, she tied her career high with 25 points, seven threes. Now, that said, uh, Auburn has had days where they can go. They, they've had two games with 13 plus threes themselves. And, and they're a comeback team. They were down 20 in the fourth quarter, I believe, to Vandy and came back and won. So, again, with the way they play defense, the way they can speed you up, and the fact they can still bomb it around, um, it, it, you, they're never out of it. 
So, yeah, fascinating. Do me a favor. Take a selfie with Steve Young at the game in Stanford and uh, send it to us at BYU Sports Well, Nation. once I found out that he said he was going to be there, I shot him a little text, says, I'll be there too. And he said, I'll stop by and say hi. So we'll see if that actually <laughs> comes right. to fruition or not. All right, yeah. man. Very yeah. nice. Nice it's, work, by the way, getting him on to make that commitment yeah, yesterday. Yeah, that was fun, right? Yeah. yeah. It's really fun. We'll yeah, see Steve's if this weekend works. Because Steve's a busy guy. I know. Steve may think he's going to be there. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, wow, I got 11 other things that day. But I hope he shows yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to be Steve Young. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the men's basketball team for a moment. So there was a possibility of them making the NIT. We're a couple days removed from that. If he was not in a postseason tournament, what's kind of the next step for this group, in your opinion? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a reset, right? Uh, and, and maybe this is, you know, I don't want to say it's good. It's never good to miss a postseason. It just isn't. I mean, Dave, Dave Rose, I thought they were really important streaks. They both come to an end. He comes a win shy of 20, and they don't make the NCAA NIT. And by the way, I think it's okay to have that as your standard, by the way. I think it's okay to say we're an NCAA NIT program, and Amen. other than that, let's just, sure. let's just you know, we'll, 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 we'll go for next season. Uh, it's just sad that those streaks came to an end. I thought, I thought they were meaningful, and, and to have it end, I thought, was, uh, was not great. Um, but, yeah, I mean, maybe this is, again, maybe a, a, a bit of a, I don't know, um, all the cliches come to mind, you know, kicking the butt, slapping the face, wake up call, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just kind of reset things a little bit. And, and, you know, when Dave first came in as head coach, that team, his first team was picked ninth, right, in, in the Mountain West Conference. And they finished tied for second that year, made the NIT. And there was a real edge, chip, whatever you want to call it, for that team and that program at that time. And it really took a while until that went away, until they really felt like, you know, we're back and doing what we want to do. Maybe this gets them into that same mode again. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll bring some new guys in. At least four new guys are coming in next year. I say new. At least one's a holdover. Colby Lafeson played here before he's scheduled to come back, of course. Uh, and some other new – maybe there will just be a new vibe, new feel, and, and maybe a new mentality out of this whole thing. Uh, I just feel bad that it came to an end the way it did. Yeah. But sometimes you kind of, you know, you get what you earn, and, and they earned this result this year, and then you go from there. The voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's talk BYU football in week three of practice, and specifically Jaron Hall, who is flexing yeah. his dual sport muscles with a clutch hit last night to bring in the game-winning run for the Cougars. And he was at practice a few hours earlier for, for the right. football team. And he told, he told Mike uh, Littlewood, that is, that he thought he would only have to miss, I think, maybe one game. One one baseball game dur it. during during all of this entire spring wow. thing. So he was really trying to hit. I mean, it's good that you know BYU baseball is home the entire month of March basically, um, but uh, he was really going to try and do it do it all. And so far, so good. And, and whether you just saw the one clip of him hitting last night, or you've been out to watch him at BP or see him play otherwise, what a natural. I mean, what a natural it's athlete. He's not the natural, but he's it, in at. The fact that you can be a high-level quarterback, which he is, and looks so good on the diamond. Now, he's just that, – that's, that's something. I mean, everything looks just so smooth with him uh, when it comes to baseball, and we already know what he can do with football a little bit. I imagine Saturday might be the one he has to miss because it's the open practice. Maybe, he, got, maybe he goes to the baseball game. But they've game got a home there. game with Portland yeah. at uh, 1 o'clock. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't see. know if it's that yeah. one, but yeah. BYU football is an 11 seed in ESPN's FPI bracket against six seed Wisconsin. How do you like round two, Greg? So we presume this is a <laughs> regional thing, right? So they'd be, so their seed line would be in the mid forties, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. eh, I, think 40, that's fair. I think 44. 44. Is right if you were to right, go yeah. straight across, you were to 44. Yeah. So you're somewhere in the mid forties on a seed line. I think it's about right. You know, for BYU, Going into they're not a top 25 team. They're hopefully improving from where they've been. I think uh, the, the, the last FPI or, uh, or S and P plus had them in the fifties. So yeah, 44, take that and run with it. And uh, if it's if it's in if it's at Wisconsin, we're winning that game, right? <laughs> yes. Well, well, I was thinking it'd be, <laughs> done that. I was thinking it'd be neutral side, right? <laughs> if it's, it's neutral, neutral, then yeah, yeah. no, maybe it'd be good. yeah. I, I think that's about right. If you're it's in Denver, these, these imaginary little makeups, that's I like it. Yeah, that's yeah. what the off season is for us, yes. guys. These imaginary <laughs> little yeah. makeups. <laughs> yeah, I hear 44 in that lineup, and I think. Okay, probably eight regular season wins, which would be a step up from from this year. Uh, what would qualify as improvement for BYU football coming off a seven and six season with the bowl game win uh, in Idaho? Well, I always I always set double digit wins as what you as the the ideal. So I guess I'll just stay with that. N not that it wouldn't be improvement if you don't get to ten, but that's always kind of the, the the benchmark to me is if you had an exceptional season by getting the double digit wins. And I guess I'll kind of keep that as my goal. Yeah, that would certainly be exceptional. That'd be yeah. awesome. And it would be an improvement. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well, have fun uh, Saturday, three thirty Eastern. We'll listen to you on BYU Radio. You got Brenna Chase coming up soon. Yeah. Yes. She's marrying a quasi Canadian. We understand. Yes, yes she yes, is yes. from Lethbridge. <laughs> Yeah, Southern Alberta. Alberta. Yep. Yeah. God's country. <laughs> hey, enjoy the trip to Stanford, California. Not Palo Alto. Near Palo Alto. It's Stanford. a dome place. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Greg. You got it, guys.